absolute transfer madness going on at Tottenham Hotspur this morning. I feel like Tottenham fans have been waiting all window to sign Emerson Royale and sign a striker. And all of a sudden, in the same day, you might get Emerson Royale and get Dominic Solanke in. Fabrizio Romano has done a here we go for Emerson Royale to AC Milan. I feel like this deal has been dragging on for months. And you've also reached an agreement with Bournemouth over a fee for Dominic Solanke. So it looks like nearly two done deals in the same day for Tottenham Hotspur. So let's dive into the news on Tottenham. Then I'm going to give you my opinion. Because to be honest, I've always said, if Tottenham don't go into next season with any additions to the front line, they could, they could struggle. But I think Tottenham are building something good, but they need someone experienced in the front line, someone that particularly maybe striker that can push someone onto the wing. And I think Tottenham will be in a much better position. And I think that the project Tottenham is building is a good one. And I think while Ivan Tony stands out as being a better player than Solanke, I actually think when you look at what Ange wants to do and what Ange wants to achieve, I think Solanke is a good fit for Tottenham. But let's talk about the Solanke news and then I'm going to give you my opinion on it. Bournemouth have agreed to sell Dominic Solanke for a club record fee and talks with Tottenham Hotspur continue to finalise the transfer. Personal terms in place, the 26-year-old striker desperate to complete the move. It's been very obvious Solanke wants to top the move and it's been said by Romano, Ornstein, every good journalist under the sun that Tottenham have been working on this. Yesterday, it was said the deal was very advanced. Today, Tottenham have agreed a fee. Now, if Tottenham have agreed a deal with Solanke on personal terms and then agree with Bournemouth, essentially all it is is probably how they're going to structure the fee with Bournemouth, how much are they going to pay up front, how much is add-ons, uh, how are they going to pay it, and then I think it's a done deal. As Romano retweeted his tweet for on Dominic Solanke two days ago, when Romano retweets his tweet, you know it's almost done. Other sources said Tottenham are in advance talks with Bournemouth over Solanke. Spurs made their first approach late on Thursday. Spurs are closing in on a deal with Bournemouth for Solanke and there's plenty of positivity about the transfer getting sealed. And considering Tottenham have agreed a, a fee, a fee with Bournemouth, I think that happens. I mean, if Tottenham have agreed a fee, that basically means the price is agreed. They're going to pay that price. They're just negotiating, you know, which what is the add-ons? What do they pay up front? Do they pay it over three years? Do they pay it over five years? But Emerson Royale and Dominic Solanke, unless things go wrong, medicals go wrong, essentially are done deals for Tottenham. And they're also exploring bringing in a winger. Now, that could be Pedro Neto. That could be somebody else. We're going to talk about that at the end of the window. But I'm going to say this now as a United fan. If Tottenham get Dominic Solanke in and a winger in, you finish above us. 100% I think you finish above us, which I don't like. I mean, right now you probably finish above us, but I'm assuming we're going to sign Delict and a DM. I'm hoping we do. But I, I do think if Tottenham get that strike on wing signing, and it makes a big difference. Um, this is Man United's Twitter at the moment. These, these two guys I follow, they both support Man United like me, and I completely agree with what they're saying. This was said by H. Might not be the most effective way of going about things when it comes to modern footy, but the Spurs project is one of my favourites in Europe. At the moment, the style of play with a likeable gaffer, exciting players, and a young team I like a lot. And then Charlie said, fully agree, they probably my favourite team to watch in the PL due to the manager's personality and how it reflects on his team and the way they play. And this is this is from Man United fans, and this is, again, how I feel. I think Spurs are one of the most exciting teams to watch because they play such a good game of football in the sense that it's open for a neutral just to watch. There's goals in every game. They've got so many exciting young talent, young talents. They've got so many likeable players, and, and they've got a good coach in, in Ange, and they, they play good football. It's not Arteta and Pep where it's so tactical and it's all, you know, this this tactic here and all this and this, and it's a bit nerdy tactic-y. It's like a fun kind of tactic, Spurs. I don't know. That's the way I kind of explain it. Now, let's talk about Solanke. Let's talk about why I think this is a good signing. Do you know what? Son is better on the wing. I was Son did well, centre forward, but Son is a left winger. And the first thing Solanke allows, obviously you do have Richarlison as well. I think he's set to stay and Richarlison can do a job because he had a really good purple patch last season, but Son on the left wing. And now Dominic Solanke last season managed 19 goals and three assists. The season before managed six goals and seven assists. Now people were saying, oh, he's only had one good season. But actually, if you did watch him in the 22-23 season, while his numbers wasn't as good, he got 13 goal contributions to 33 games. He could have got a lot more in terms of how he influenced the team. And Bournemouth have really come of their own. And the improvement in Bournemouth from their 2022 to 2023 was massive. Bournemouth played some much better football last year. And... They had a much different system that had been implemented by their coach. And Solanke really grew into a top player. Now, the thing about Solanke is, do I think he's a better player than Ivan Tony on paper? No. But do I fit, think when you look at Ange's system or Ange wants, Solanke is almost a perfect fit for Ange's system? Yes. And I think you know he can get you goals. 
So let's talk about Dominic Solanke. Now, Dominic Solanke is probably the best centre forward in the league off the ball or up there. And when I'm talking about the high press, I'm talking about the high press, leading the line. I'm talking about literally just running at players, making things happen, winning the ball back high, which is exactly what Ange wants. I think one of the reasons Tottenham had a lot of injuries last season is because Ange plays such a high intensity style of football. And Solanke, that's what he likes to do. His work rate, his capability of leading the line, pressing intelligently, following instructions is one of the best. This is where he beats the Ivan Tonys. This is where he beats the Erling Haaland's in off the ball work. Now, at the end of the day, I'm not saying that he's better than Tony. I'm not saying that he's better than Haaland. He's not, it's not better than Haaland. But I'm talking in, in the particular area of off the ball in terms of pressing, which is something that Ange wants so highly. You get that. Ange also likes to transition. He, there's also opportunities for Tottenham. They play a high line, they like to push teams, they like to transition, they like to attack quick. What you've got, and Son was quite good at this last season, is he can make runs in behind. He's quick, he's intelligent, he can stay on side, he can make runs in behind, and he's very good at making those runs, not just in behind, but even wider where he can stretch defences. Because I spoke about this in my Arsenal video yesterday, but you want to stretch defences. Oppositions have a back four, and there's only a little bit of space between each player of the back four if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're attacking them narrowly. They can cover it. There's really difficult to find space between the back four. The minute, and this is one of the reasons Ange likes his wingers to almost hug the touchline, the minute you've got players on each touchline, it stretches the pitch, which means the back four have much more space between each defender. There's much more gaps. And Solanke is very good at stretching the, the play and also finding space between those gaps, which will help Tottenham break down those low blocks. And he just... I think one of the things he does is when he stretches the lines and with his movement, it can improve the players around him because he can create space for them. And in terms of Ange Ball, he provides the focal point. He's got good hold up play. He's a clinical box striker. He's very intelligent off the ball. He creates space for his teammates and he puts holes in opponents' defence. In terms of what he's going to do, in terms of the role he's going to play at Tottenham, I think him being a focal point in his movement will just improve the general attacking play of Tottenham on top of potential goals that he can bring. Now, 21 goals and four assists last season is unbelievable. He also has a good injury record, which is something that Tottenham need to look at because the thing is with Tottenham, and I'll say this, your back five is brilliant. Vicario, Porro, Adogi, Van der Ven, Romero. That back five is brilliant. If that back five stays fit, defensively, you're great. Midfield is really good. It's just about balance and finding your best midfield three. Burble's a talent. Gray's a talent. Basum is inconsistent. Uh, Benson Carr, you know what he's capable of, but he's been a bit inconsistent post ACL. And Madison has hot and cold matches. And Saar, you know, is a good player, but again, young, raw, of course, he's going to be inconsistent. Madison, you know what he's capable of. Benton Carr, you know what he's capable of. Saar, he can do a job. Burble can do a job. Like, Tottenham have got very good midfield. If they can figure out their best midfield balance, if their defence can stay fit, their midfield can stay fit, and their attack can stay fit, they've got a very good side. And 90 goals in the Premier League for Bournemouth, while also, you know, you know, scoring many goals and influencing the game in other ways in terms of his runs, in terms of his pressing, is very good. He can get you 19 goals in the Premier League season for Bournemouth. He should have even more chances created from his Spurs. He's going to improve the Spurs play. Now, it's always been, you know, Ivan, Tony, Solanke. So let's talk about it. With Solanke, I believe he's two and a half, three years younger than Tony. So more of a longer term signing. He is coming off a much better season and form. I know Ivan Tony got picked for the Euros over him, but Solanke's definitely in the better form, come off the better season. I think attitude is known to be very professional and hardworking. Not that I think there's anything wrong with Ivan Tony's attitude, but the way he speaks about Brentford, like the club that's given him this platform, is like he doesn't like them. Um, he's reaching his prime now. You know, he might be one of those late bloomer centre forwards. Some centre forwards, they don't get really good until their mid 20s, and that could be Solanke. He was someone that was rated really highly when he was a youngster. Off the ball, he's going to beat Tony in his pressing, his movement, his IQ. I think he suits Ange Ball and what Ange wants to do because of the intensity of his play, probably a little bit better than Tony in the sense of his pressing ability to stretch lines, be a transitional runner. However, if you're looking for a finisher, someone that's on the ball, someone that's going to drop deep, someone that's going to link play, you do have a better player in either than Tony. And I think there is a risk in Solanke because this is his first real, real good season. But if you watched him the season before, even though he didn't get the numbers, he was, he did, he was good. He did have a good season. And maybe Solanke, in terms of what Ange wants from his front line, could be a better fit in terms of Solanke's more like to be moulded into an Ange kind of player. With Solanke, he ranked first for headed goals, first for offensive duels, first for interceptions, and first for progressive passes amongst Premier League strikers last season, second for XG, second for passes into the penalty area, third for non-penalty goals, third for goals, 
third for aerial duels and fourth for dribbles. So you can see just looking at this, he's really good at headers. He's really good in the air. That's going to help Tottenham from set pieces. Tottenham also do put a lot of good crosses in. Brennan Johnson, he's had he's had some really good spells for Tottenham, but he's been very hot and cold for Tottenham, but it's his first season. But he does put in a good cross every now and then, Brennan Johnson. I think he actually has one of the best uh, assist per minute ratios in the Premier League, Brennan Johnson, actually. And you can see, you know, his XG shows that he gets into good areas, good move, and he'll get into the box for the crossbacks that Tottenham bring in. He can dribble, he's good in the air, he's good at hold up, he brings a lot. He's 26, he's six foot two, he's got a good back to play goal, he's an athletic mobile striker that can press, that can move, that can get on the end of crosses, that uses his pace, strength, and IQ to be very good, and he could be a target man. If Spurs want to play with a target man, he can be that. If Spurs want to play with a transitional runner, he can be that. He can do the high press, he gives versatility. In terms of how Solanke fits into Tottenham, he can hold up the ball, he can link up with wingers, he can win the high balls and stabilize Tottenham's attacking line and help with retention. His set pieces and physical presence is probably something that t- will improve Tottenham. I don't think Tottenham were very good at corners last year or set pieces going forward and defensively. And I think Solanke being an aerial threat will just actually help Tottenham. I think he's going to help Tottenham defensively a bit more as well. Crosses. Tottenham's wingers often play cutback crosses. Now, most of those crosses are on the floor, but Dominic Saluki is a box. Dominic Saluki, Solanke is a box striker. He likes to be in the box. You know, he got the second highest XG in the Premier League, got 19 goals. His instinct, his movement, his anticipation for a striker has to be very good to get that. His awareness to be in the right place at the right time, get on the end of those crosses, is a lot more effective than a Richarlison, a lot more natural to it than a Son. And I think with Son and, you know, even more if he plays or Neto, if you get him or Brennan Johnson or Werner, you know, using their pace, getting down the byline, and putting in a cross, Solanke can be there. He's fast, he's physical, he's powerful, he's Premier League proven. Sometimes we've seen in the past players sign these big names from foreign leagues, they come to the Premier League, oof, that Man United sign Falcao, Poof, crap. You know that like, he can do it in the Premier League and you know that he can do it in a system that is as intense as Angers. You get that with Solanke. So, as I said on him, this is from my last video, he's a Premier League proven goal scorer in his prime that is a complete forward that's developed significantly over the last two seasons. He can allow Son to play left wing and he'll provide the perfect profile to play number nine in Andrew's system. Bournemouth, one of the best teams last season for direct attacks and Solanke thrives on transitions. Additionally, Solanke had more pressures as a striker than any other forward last season, which suits Andrew's high intensity pressing game. Solanke is also two years younger than Watkins and had the same goal to game ratio as him in the Premier League last season. Despite playing for a weaker side, he provides a focal point can lead the line and excel in high pressing and has an elite work rate. That's what I said on, on Solanke to Tottenham the other day. That was my opinion on it. And look, I think that Solanke coming in significantly improves Tottenham because Tottenham's front line is something that a lot of people look at it and go, hmm, that, that's weak. Son, you know, unbelievable player. Um, Decky, there's a good player there, but does he suit Ange Ball? Are we going to find his best role in the middle? Johnson shows potential, but he's very hit and miss. Werner's someone that more comes off the bench and, and makes an impact. So Richarlison, I think, is a good player, but he's been hot and cold at Spurs. Having Son and Solanke, you know, as two players in your front line, striker and left wing, it, it just definitely lifts you up a level in terms of attack. Now, one player that would lift you up massively, because I think if you look at right wing, you know, Son, Neto, Solanke would be an unbelievable front three is Pedro Neto. There's an interest in that. I think it would depend on your sales. Manchester City also expressing an interest. That means the place, um, the price could go up. But with Neto, he can play across the front three. He'd put those low crosses to the striker, which Solanke would thrive off. He would link up well with players like Madison, provide runs for him. I think make Madison a better player as well, because he can play out wide. He can stretch the width. He can create space for other players, but he can come inside and rotate. He can drift centrally. He likes to get the ball, play those quick one-touch passes, play between the defensive lines, and also likes to go wide and can offer that 1v1 support for Porro. Overloading the right-hand side, it would work well. I think on the right, Right wing, his ability to just power down the right wing, get down the byline, play a cut back in, be a transition monster, press, cover mass amounts of ground, full of his aggression, would be unbelievable for Tottenham. But Neto is a conversation for another day because no one really knows if that's going to happen. But Tottenham basically have signed Dominic Solanke. Unless something goes wrong, um, it looks like Emerson Way was out and Solanke is in. And I do think that is a good sign for Tottenham. So, guys, please do hit that like button. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new. Tottenham fans, let me know your thoughts down below on Solanke, and yeah, bye.